Sonic has been under a lot of scrutiny in the past few years for a myriad of titles that didn't live up to people's expectations. Sure, games like Sonic 06 and Sonic Boom are generally kind of bad games, but many people talk as if Sonic hasn't been good since Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Adventure 1, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, what, whatever game they seem to like last, whichever one was their Sonic game. It's cool to hate Sonic now, and while I do wish that Sega would stick to a series for more than one game really and would be a little more careful with their iconic franchise, they've been pumping out quality games in between all this. Lost World had lots of promise and cool ideas had they had time to make more games in the series, Sonic Generations was a fantastic nostalgic trip through Sonic's history, and Sonic Colors was just a really good game. Not to mention Sonic Advance series and a whole bunch of other Sonic games that I don't have time to really talk about, but the point is, Sonic has had a lot of games people hate on that I would genuinely defend, and others I may not. So I may ask, what would I choose for Hit Reset? Well, it came down to two games, and while I love them both, I have bigger plans for a certain spin-off that involves spinning and balls, so that only left me with one other option. It's a game not developed by Sonic Team, uh, mostly, and it's actually Sonic's first foray into 3D. Sonic 3D Blast for the Sega Genesis and the Sega Saturn. Now, generally considered to be one of the worst Sonic games ever made, I won't say it's as good as stuff like Sonic 1 through 3 or the Sonic Adventure series, it's actually one of my favorite entries besides those, and I generally never understood the hate for it. You see, a lot of the Sonic games get hate kind of immediately for not playing like the classic Sonic games in the Sega Genesis, and while I still kind of understand that, I still think it's a little nearsighted. So I think it's time to show you why, without the guise of a Sonic game, why you may be missing out on kind of an underrated gem. Sonic 3D Blast is developed by Traveler's Tale, who were originally known for games based on Disney franchises like Mickey Mania and Toy Story, though they've now become well known for their juggernaut LEGO franchise of games. Their only other claim to fame before this, though, was their work on two games with Sega, both based on Sonic. Besides 3D Blast, they also made the infamous Sonic R for the Sega Saturn. Now that could be a whole other episode, but I don't know how far I'd be defending the game so much as the soundtrack. Super Sonic Racing is still amazing. Sonic Team did work closely with them, however, and the first of the two games would become Sonic 3D Blast. Originally only planned for the Genesis, the game was ported over to the Saturn for the Holiday 96 season to make up for the cancelled Sonic Extreme that was being worked on. I grew up with the Genesis version, and to call it a technical marvel is an understatement. First, they managed to put an actual FMV cutscene opening onto a cart, an insane feat at the time. Not to mention the game's 3D graphics were impressive at the time as well. The bonus game didn't look super great in retrospect on the Genesis, but overall the game was a push of the Genesis' hardware limits. The Saturn version, on the other hand, being a very quick port over, didn't really have a lot of differences, but the couple were major. First, the soundtrack for the Genesis version was done by longtime series composer Jun Tsunoe, whereas the Saturn version was done by Richard Jakes, another frequent Sega collaborator. Also, the special stage is completely different in the Saturn version, and this special stage was actually made and developed by Sonic Team. Not only that, but the PC version has another different special stage, which is a weird mashup of the other two bonus stages from the Genesis and Saturn version. Besides that, the PC version is basically the same as the Saturn version. All this is really quite odd, and while I think the special stage in the Saturn version is way better than the boring Genesis one, the superior soundtrack and lack of load times makes the Genesis version the better experience for me, so that's the one I'll be using. But they are both basically the same, gameplay-wise. So why does this game get the bad rap it does? Well, it was sort of the beginning of Sonic not playing like classic Sonic, a problem that many other Sonic games would face later on. This I understand. However, that doesn't make it a bad game, just not a proper Sonic game. Next, and the other main point, is the graphical choice. The game is played from an isometric perspective, in order to help pull off the graphical tricks made to make the game look 3D. This is the part where I make a crazy statement. I honestly dislike isometric games, and even games that are relatively well liked like Landstalker haven't really been able to convert me. However, Sonic 3D Blast manages to generally be forgiving enough and simple enough to navigate that I actually think it's one of the few examples of good isometric games. Most times, these games are difficult to navigate due to the weird control orientation, platforming can be a chore and frustrating, and figuring out where enemies and obstacles are is especially a pain. With Sonic 3D, the levels are basic, big, and wide, so moving around isn't as crazy, and most platforming isn't super precise, like, say, Landstalker has. 
Of course, the other major problem that most people have is that they see the game as just a boring fetch quest. See, the game's full title is actually Sonic 3D Blast Flicky's Island, which is the name that is used when it was released in PAL territories. The actual goal of the game is to rescue the Flickies and save their island from Robotnik. These little guys actually come from a generally forgotten Sega arcade game named Flicky. Generally speaking, this game wasn't really remembered, even back then, but actually tends to be better known now because of this game. Still, having the main goal being exploring levels to find tiny birds hiding in enemies is a bit awkward. Most levels will have two sections, and in each you have to find five Flickies hiding in robot enemies. Now, this does mean you have to actually explore, platform, and play this differently from a normal Sonic game where you're just running a lot, and that may be kind of annoying for some people. Still, I found the levels to never take a super long time, and the enemy placement for the most part was never too obscure as to make questing for the Flickies all that annoying. This is more defending issues with the game, though. However, there are elements that no one really ever mentions that I think really sealed the deal with why this game is much better than it gets credit for. Again, let's head back to the differences quick. The two soundtracks are both quite good. The Genesis version really gets you amped up and wanting to keep pushing ahead. The Saturn version, on the other hand, is a far more epic, atmospheric soundtrack, and sounds more like it belongs in an RPG. While the Saturn version may technically fit the slower pace of the game better, it just doesn't work as well for me, and I think the more high-energy Genesis compositions really work with the game better. On the other end, the special stage on the Saturn, which played like Sonic 2's bonus stage but looked way nicer, was significantly better than the Genesis version, which is the same idea, but instead of running fast and flying around this giant halfpipe, you were slow, you were platforming, and had a weird pseudo 3D engine going that made it hard to judge jumps and such. It was kind of lackluster and boring and frustrating. In this sense, each version had a cool aspect to them though, and it's something that tends to get lost and overlooked for its perceived flaws instead. However, let me end on what I think is one of the coolest parts of the game, the final level. The first zone is you rescuing the last of the Flickies, typical stuff, but it plays the song from the opening story cutscene which kind of gets you amped up and kind of starts to gel everything together. The second zone is this massive climb up a giant Robotnik robot, and the ever looming presence of him as you platform your way to the top is actually pretty epic, and I was kind of awestruck with it back when I first played it, and it's still cool even now. Then, of course, you enter the inside and fight the final boss, which is a little anticlimactic, and then BOOM! Done! Well, that is unless you get all the Chaos Emeralds. If you did, you then fight the real final boss, which is also pretty cool. This boss fight comes in sections, and each one has its own pattern and style, and even spatial area. This giant black void with just floating squares is very stylistic, and something I've always found cool, and unlike many other final bosses at the time. That's not to say he's particularly hard or anything, but it's a cool original style of a boss, which made the end that much more satisfying, even if the actual ending was just another still picture cutscene. Overall though, Sonic 3D Blast, while it's a bit mindless and maybe not exactly what a Sonic game should be, was a cool idea, and actually executed pretty well for being a pseudo 3D platformer a bit ahead of its time. It's certainly not the beginning of the end of Sonic, as many would tell you, but it is the start of Sonic's ever-changing game identity for better or worse. It's certainly a game I still enjoy playing today, nostalgia or not. Hey guys, this is Gunstar. Just want to thank you all once again for watching this. It means a lot. If you like this, you can watch some more stuff on Sega Bits, like Liam's awesome This Is Saturn that's playing right below here. Really cool show about all things Saturn. Or, if you're feeling like seeing Saturn from across the pond, you can go over to my channel and check out one of my Sega Importatoriums that I've done. Particularly, the newest one is about Cyberbots, which is an awesome Capcom fighting game that not a lot of people have played. And of course, you should also like, subscribe, and whatever else you do on the internet with me and also with Sega Bits, because we are both pretty goddamn awesome. Thanks again for watching, guys.